Putting a Raspberry Pi and Retro Pi together gives you the ultimate retro gaming machine. Let me show you how to set this up from scratch and download and install all the games you've ever dreamed of. So let's get playing. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. RetroPie is a great way to turn a simple Raspberry Pi into any console or arcade machine up to the mid 1990s. So all of the classic 8-bit, 16-bit and 32-bit machines will work flawlessly, giving you access to literally thousands of the best computer games ever written. It combines a number of pieces of software that provide control and emulation, and then builds them into a single application that lets you very easily set up every console and arcade machine on a single Raspberry Pi. You can then easily swap between any of these machines using only your game controller. In this tutorial, we'll start with a Raspberry Pi and a blank SD card and build the complete system from scratch. I'll show you where to get your games and how to install them so that you can play practically every game ever written in the first 25 years of the games industry. So let's get started. The people at RetroPie have made it incredibly easy to get started. They provide a number of SD card images that you can simply download and burn onto your blank SD card. Simply plug it into your Raspberry Pi and you're 90% finished. So first we need to go to the RetroPie website at retropie.org.uk. From here you need to click the download link in the menu bar and then scroll down to the big red download buttons. Simply click the one that matches the Raspberry Pi that you're going to be using. For this tutorial I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 3 and this will let me emulate pretty much everything up to the Sega Saturn and Nintendo 64 and both of which um, just about run on the Raspberry Pi 4. So once the image has been downloaded we need to burn it to an SD card. If you haven't done this before, you're going to need to download a program called Etcher, which will put the SD card image onto the actual SD card. And this process is called flashing the card. So Etcher can be downloaded from this web address. So from the home page, simply click the download button that matches your operating system and install Etcher. We've now got everything we need to create our RetroPie installation disk. So next we need to plug in our blank SD card into our computer so that we can flash it. We then need to boot up Etcher and as you can see there are only three steps needed to actually get the card flashed. So first we need to select the file which we just downloaded. So find that on your hard drive wherever you saved it. So I've saved it in this emulation RetroPie folder. Once we've done that, we need to tell Etcher where we want to flash this to. So click on the Select Target button. And then you'll see that it shows you a list of the devices. Select your SD card. And then finally, we just click on the Flash button and that will start Etcher actually creating our installation disk. One thing you need to be careful with is the size of your SD card. Now RetroPie will install onto a 4GB card, but you do have to leave enough space for the games you want to run. Now all of the 8-bit machines added together only take up about 2GB. But when you get to the 16-bit consoles, you'll need a couple of gigabytes each. And if you want to install a full arcade game set, you'll need around 30 to 60 gigabytes, depending on what version you use. Now for consoles like the PlayStation 1, which will work okay on the Raspberry Pi, you'll get about 3 or 4 games per gigabyte of storage space. So I'll be installing all the 8 and 16-bit console games, along with a full 2003 MAME arcade set, which should play well on my Raspberry Pi 3. 
Now for this, I'm going to be using a 64 gigabyte SD card, which will leave a few gigabytes left over for my favorite PlayStation games. So now that we have our RetroPie disk image, we need to get the software up and running on our Raspberry Pi. The easiest way to do this is to plug in a keyboard, mouse and a games controller, and then plug the Raspberry Pi into a TV or monitor. We then simply plug the SD card in and power on the Raspberry Pi. As RetroPie boots up for the first time, it will first resize itself to make full use of your full SD card space, and then it will reboot for a second time. And eventually you'll get to the gamepad setup screen. So just simply hold down any button on your controller until it's recognized. And then just go through each of the buttons and pressing the relevant one on your controller. You'll work your way through. So I'm using a Super NES controller here. And I run out of buttons at the right shoulder. So any of these buttons which I don't have on my controller, I can just hold down any button I want and it will then come up as not defined. So all of these last analog um, sticks and so on, I'm just holding on a button and setting them as not defined. Eventually I'll get down to the very bottom for the hotkey enable. I'm just going to hold down a key for that to say not defined, but then RetroPie will come back and saying that I do need to define that. And at this point, I can just simply accept the default value by clicking the A button to say yes. And then I'm into RetroPie. So this leaves us in the settings area, and there's only really one thing we need to do with RetroPie right now, and that's to set up our internet connection. And that's configured inside the Raspi config option. So you need to use your games controller to move the um, selector down here. So if we move the down to that, and then press A to select that, that will take us into the Raspberry Pi's configuration utility. On these screens, it's best to use your keyboard to navigate. So we'll use the arrow keys to move up and down within a list. And then we can use the tab key to move between the areas. So here the areas are the actual list and then the buttons down the bottom. So we want to go to system options and we can just press return to select that. So I'm setting up my Wi-Fi connection. So I select wireless LAN, and then I have to specify what country region that I'm currently based in. And, and for me, that's going to be GB for, for Great Britain. It's now setting up my Wi-Fi and asking me for my SSID. So again, that's the broadcast name for your Wi-Fi connection. And of course, my Wi-Fi password. So just press enter to accept that. And that should take me back to my options here. And at this point, I need to use the tab key to get down to my finish button, press enter to select that, and then enter again to reboot the Raspberry Pi. So once RetroPie and the Raspberry Pi have rebooted, we should now have an internet connection. So that's RetroPie all set up and ready to go. But obviously we don't yet have any games for our consoles. So that's what we're gonna work on next. The best place to get games from is the MU Paradise website. Now, a few years ago, this website removed all its links to its games downloads due to legal pressure, but we can apply a simple fix to get them working again. I've covered this in detail in a separate video, um, which I'll put links to in the description. Um, so I'm only going to show you the quick setup process here. The, the fix involves running a piece of JavaScript code when you view the MU Paradise website. We need a browser plugin called Tamper Monkey to do this. So if you go to this web address, then select the tab that matches your browser and then click the link to install Tamper Monkey. And you'll then need to follow the instructions from there to add it as an extension to your browser. So now that we have Tamper Monkey, we need a piece of code that fixes these download links on the MU Paradise website. 
So if you go to this web address, and again, I'll include all these links in the description. Once you get there, you'll see that this is a GitHub page. So look for the raw link in the top right hand corner of the listing window and click on that. TamperMonkey will recognize that this is some code that it can use and it will ask you if you want to install it. So click the install button and that's the fix now installed for MU Paradise. So let's go to MU Paradise at this web address. And if you use the link on the left hand side to the go to the ROMs, ISOs and games section, you'll see there's a list of consoles, computers and arcade systems and you can download games for each of these. Now if you want to, you can of course browse through or, or use the search function on this page to look for individual games that you might want to play. But a much faster and easier way to build up your games library is just to download complete ROM sets for each of the systems that you want to emulate. So if I scroll down this page to the other section, you'll see here there is a link to the complete ROM sets library. So clicking on this link, um, we're now again to a navigation page, but here each of the letter links will let you find the gaming systems that you want for rather than individual games. So we now have links for our computers and gaming consoles. Um, we're not going to download any arcade ROMs from MU Paradise. You, you can do that, but again, we're gonna try and get a complete set and we will do that in a different way. So I'm gonna show you how to add a single system um, and you can simply repeat this process for as many games consoles as you want um, to build up your complete retro gaming mega system. So if I click on the A link, you'll see a list of computers and consoles that begin with the letter A. So we're gonna start with the granddaddy of them all, the Atari 2600. So if you click on this link, then scroll down to the download section, you'll see that there are two download links. The bottom one is the original broken link from MU Paradise. And the top one, as it says, is the one added by Tamper Monkey, which includes our workaround code. Now, on some browsers, you can just click this link to trigger the download. But in others, such as Google Chrome, as I'm using here, we need to right click on the link and then select the save link as option. So this should then trigger the download. Now again, some of the browsers will warn you that this is not being downloaded over a secure connection. Now this doesn't mean that there are any issues with security on this download. It just means that it's not using an encrypted connection. So um, if your browser does do this, there's usually an option here which lets you select keep the download. Once the download is complete, we need to open the archive file and extract the game files into a suitably named folder. Now, so some of the downloads will be in RAR format, so you may need to install the 7-zip app to open them. So just go to 7-zip.org and install it from there. But once you've extracted these files, um, these will be the ones that we need to transfer to our Raspberry Pi SD card. So there are a couple of ways of transferring your files. Uh, we can set up a network share using Samba, and I'll show you that in just a second. But probably the easiest way is to use a USB memory stick and to simply use that to transport the files from one computer to another. So make sure you have a memory stick that's big enough to transport the games you want to move. Again, for these 8-bit consoles, they, they are very small files. Um, but once you start to get up, especially when we come to do our arcade um, games, we're going to need um, at least 30 gigabytes uh, or 32 gigabyte drives. So make sure your drive is formatted as an FAT32 drive. And that simply makes sure that both your PC and your Raspberry Pi can actually read the and drive and read the files from it. So open the memory stick using, um, I'm us using Windows here, so I'm going to use Windows Explorer, or you can use whatever um, normal file manager program you, you use. And we need to create a folder on the USB stick in the root of it called RetroPie, that's all lowercase. 
What once we've done that, um, make sure that your Raspberry Pi, which is running RetroPie, is fully booted up, and then simply plug this newly created USB stick into it. RetroPie will detect that folder that we just created, and it's going to format it for us so that we can easily copy our game files and get them put into the right emulators. Now this process does take a few seconds to complete, so if you watch the activity light on your USB drive, you'll see that it is blinking for a while, uh, and wait until you get a nice steady state, and at that point the folders are created. Uh, if you don't have an activity light, then I would suggest leaving it for about a minute just to make sure that everything has been created. If you now plug the USB drive back into your PC and view it with your file manager, you'll see that RetroPie has added a number of subfolders inside that RetroPie folder that you created. And each of these represents a console or a computer or a gaming system that RetroPie can emulate. And all we need to do is to copy our game ROMs into the correct game system folder. So for our Atari 2600 ROMs, we simply need to copy them into the Atari 2600 folder. Once you copy the files into the correct folder, you simply need to plug the USB drive back into our RetroPie Raspberry Pi. It will then detect the game files and transfer them into the RetroPie installation folder actually on the SD card inside the Raspberry Pi. Now for the Atari 2600, this will be a very fast process because um, there's only a few megabytes worth of data. Um, but keep an eye on the activity light on your USB drive and that will tell you when this copying has finished. For some of the later systems, there can be quite a few gigabytes to copy, so it can take quite a long time. So, so do try and use a USB stick with an activity light so you can see when this is finished. So once the process has finished, we need to jump back onto the Raspberry Pi. And you'll notice that we don't see anything yet. We need to restart Emulation Station to get it to see the new games that we've added. So once you do that, you'll find all of a sudden then you have the Atari 2600 listed in your list of games. And if you select that with the A key, you'll find your list of games. Use your D-pad to navigate the list and A to play a game and that will boot up the relevant emulator. So you've now got your Atari 2600 built into your Raspberry Pi. And don't forget that if you want to finish a game, just press your start and select buttons together, and that will take you back to the main RetroPie screen. So that's one complete console set up in RetroPie, and you can simply repeat this process for all the other consoles you want to emulate. And of course, you don't have to do each one individually. We can download a number, copy a number onto our USB drive, and then import them into RetroPie all in one go. So another way to copy your files between computers is to use a network share, and that works using something called Samba on the RetroPie. So if you go to your RetroPie configuration section, and then select the RetroPie setup, that will open up a little configuration utility. So we need to go to configuration and tools, and then we need to scroll down till we find the Samba share. If you select that, the first option there is to install that. So, so do that, and then come back out of that utility. And that's now set up our RetroPie, and it will share some of its folders, including our ROMs folder on the network. So of course we now need to connect to that from our main computer. In Windows, you do this by mapping a network drive using Windows Explorer. Right click on the This PC icon and select the Map Network Drive option. This will bring up a dialog window which lets us find the RetroPie shares. So leave the drive letter as it is, but in the folder box type in backslash backslash RetroPie. RetroPie will automatically set up this network name to make it easy to connect. If you now click in the Browse button, you should see the RetroPie network share with a number of folders inside it. Select the ROMs folder and click the Finish button. If you can't get the RetroPie share to show in the Browse section, you can simply type backslash backslash RetroPie backslash ROMs into the folder box and then click Finish to see if Windows can locate the share.
Or if that doesn't work, you can find the IP address of your Raspberry Pi and use that instead. Now once you've got the network share set up, you should now find the ROMs folder on your Raspberry Pi appearing as an extra drive on your computer. Inside the ROMs folder, you'll see all the individual system folders that we need to put the game's ROMs inside. And you can now simply drag and drop files into these folders to install them into RetroPie. After installing any ROMs, you need to restart Emulation Station so that it can detect all your new games. Now there are some consoles that you won't see listed in the main Emu Paradise Complete ROM set section. If we browse across to the ends, you'll find that all of the Nintendo consoles aren't there. Now it's not that these pages don't exist anymore, it's just that the links to them have been removed from the complete ROM set section. So the way to get these is to go to Google, and if you search for MU Paradise, followed by the console, followed by full ROM sets, then you should be able to find them in the lists, and if you click through, that will take you then to the download pages for these ROM sets. That lets you download full ROM sets for just about every games console or home computer that you can think of. But if you want to play arcade games, we need to get hold of them in a slightly different way. If you look at the RetroPie documentation, you'll see that it suggests using MAME 2003 as your arcade emulator. MAME ROMs work in a slightly different way to console ROMs, and we have to make sure that we get the right set of ROMs for the version of MAME that we're going to be using. Now I've made a couple of videos to help you understand main ROMs and where you can download them, so please do check the description for links to those videos. But I'll quickly take you through the process here, but please do refer to those videos for full instructions. Each version of MAME has a matching set of game ROMs. To get the best from MAME, you should use its matching ROM set. So MAME 2003 uses ROM version 0.78, and the best place to get hold of these ROMs is from archive.org. If we go to this website, we can search for MAME followed by the version number that we want. Now this should bring up the ROM sets that we want. If you click into one of these results, um, and I'll put a link to the below to the one that I've used, you'll get a number of download options on the right hand side of the page. Now these ROM sets are big downloads, they're upwards of 30 gigabytes, and the fastest way to download them is to use BitTorrent. So you should find a downloadable torrent link in the download section. You'll need a BitTorrent client that understands these links and is able to get hold of the files for you. Now I use QBitTorrent as my download client and if you install this software and then download the torrent link file from archive.org, you can then open that link file and QBitTorrent should start to download your ROM set. Again, check out my other videos where I go through this in much more detail. At the end of this process, and it will take a couple of hours to download, you will have a full set of arcade machine ROMs, and that's somewhere around 3,000 to 4,000 games. Now these need to be copied into the MAME-LibRetro folder on your Raspberry Pi. So whatever method you're going to use, um, do be aware that this is, again, a 30 gigabyte data transfer, so it is going to take a couple of hours probably to complete. But once the transfer is complete, restart Emulation Station again, and you should see a MAME section in your main RetroPie menu. If you open up this section, you'll see a list of all the arcade machines ready for you to play. When you use MAME, you're using the exact software from the original arcade machines. Now this still expects you to put money in the slot before you can play the game, so use the select button on your controller to put a coin in the machine, and then the start button on your controller to press the one player button on the arcade machine, and you're ready to go. So that's your Raspberry Pi set up as the ultimate retro games console. There should be enough great games in there to keep you going for quite some time. 
As well as playing all the well-known games, make sure you browse through the lists and try out some that you've never heard of. I always find a few fantastic titles that I've never played, as well as a few where you do have to wonder how they ever made it to a commercial release. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, and don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons to make sure you don't miss any of my new videos. And also make sure to check out my other retro gaming, coding and making videos. Don't forget that the MU Paradise setup and MAME download videos will be linked to in the description down below. So I look forward to seeing you again very soon, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.